Hey guys, what's going on? I'm John Malecki and in this video I'm going to show you how I made this wooden toy truck. It includes how I made these awesome off-road tires, how I did this little detail on the tailgate, and how I made all of the body panels without using a CNC. Check it out. So when my girlfriend asked me what we wanted to get her nephew for Christmas, I knew it had to be a truck. And instead of snagging up one of these, I figured why not make one? What I'm gonna do here is just freehand draw a template and then I'm gonna cut it on the bandsaw. I'll shape it up and then what I'll do is cut the panels. The way we're gonna build the truck is we're gonna do two sides, a roof, the bed, the hood, and then I'll shape it all as it's glued together. That way I don't have to try and fuss with perfect parts and make them all align. So we got this big chunk of white oak. My joiner's broken right now, so we're gonna square it up by hand and we're gonna try to make the whole truck out of this. So I cut a template just in case I screw up on any of these panels and I can go back and reference something uh, and just recut another piece of wood instead of having to draw out and cut the truck shape again. So what I'm gonna do here is throw some CA glue in that gap that I cut the window out in, trace it onto one of the panels and then cut those out on the bandsaw and then glue them back together, tape them and shape them up nice before I glue in all the other parts. So I want to create the back of the cab and I want it to be this distance that is below the roof but above the piece on the bottom. In order to do so, I'm just going to use this, the bed where it's at, and stack it up and then that'll give me my measurement. And that's how I've been measuring everything, is, is relative to the piece itself. Sam's over here messing everything up. God, Sam. So I'm mocking up all the pieces here um, and I essentially cut everything into panels so I could sand it after. But a lot of like the plans that I've seen around for this kind of stuff have everything cut to a final dimension. So I'm curious, how would you build this if you were doing something similar? Leave a comment in the description and let me know. I've done this before so what we're doing is just using CA glue as a clamp. So that way I'll put it in clamps, but it'll hold itself together long enough here that I don't gotta worry about it. I once gave a Captain America five-year-old gift to my teammate's son. You know what he did? He opened that Captain America gift and he put that launching Captain America disc onto the shield and he launched it straight at his father's crotch and it was fantastic. So as things typically go, had to pivot here. CNC, I have too many updates on my computer because I had some computer issues. If you guys follow me on Instagram, you probably saw that. And if you don't, follow me. But, so what I did was I outlined each circle for the wheels on this uh, piece of white oak here. It's about two inches thick. I'm gonna rough cut them on the bandsaw. And we're gonna put a little jig together real fast to get perfect, perfect cuts on the bandsaw as well. So if you're wondering where I know to stop, I drew a line on the bed of the um, bandsaw in order to know, and then that keeps me my perfect two inches to the center that I measured for before. Super simple jig. Um, if you're doing something bigger, clamp it down to the table. You want to clamp it because the force of the bandsaw blade is going downwards and it'll pull it if it's not held correctly. 
and it'll just shoot somewhere and it's super dangerous. I literally did it like 10 minutes ago. Pretty slick. So to cut these ones, we had the angle, uh, the opposite of the way it is now on the saw. But if we wanna get a V like this, we have to take the opposite piece and cut it on the opposite face. So we flipped the miter gauge around and that's gonna give us, after we re-glue them up, the look that we're going for here with this. Morning. You dig? This is the elusive diamond shaped glue up. We haven't heard of it. It's real rare. We only do it here in uh, my shop. So I want to put his name in the tailgate here before we cut it out. So I'm going to draw it out on a bigger piece and then I'll cut it down the size. And we'll make this thing actually hopefully look pretty sweet. Every ridiculous truck needs a ridiculous exhaust system. But we're gonna give some smokestacks to this bad boy. <laughs> So in order to retain some of the wood grain in this, we're gonna be using stains instead of paint. And I'm gonna go with these uh, couple stains from Minwax. I've been using Minwax products for a long time and they are also the sponsor of this build. So big thank you to Minwax. If you guys wanna see more from the colors I chose for this project, there'll be a link down in the description.
little bed liner action for you. I was gonna rhino line it, but I feel like that's a bit excessive. So if I put too much finish on, I just take a brush, just like you can see here, and I just even it out a bit. You want to get thin coats and let them build up. When you're spraying polyurethane, you want to avoid thick at all costs. It does not level itself, so you will get a rough finish. So now that we've got the finish on and she is rolling, yeah, it's a she, of course. One final detail. A random exhaust hole in the back. I keyed. Whole glory. Yeah. Thank you guys one more time for tuning in. If you want to see another one of my toy builds, I got another one queued up for you right here. I also want to thank Minwax for sponsoring this build. If you want to see more of the products I use on it, I got a link down in the description below. Lastly, thank you guys one more time for tuning in. Go punch your next product in the face, and I'll see you on the next video.